magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat mga kababayan. Mula nang tayo po ay mag-ere ng mga exposition tungkol sa grupo ni Pastor Apollo Kibuloy, madalas po ay nakakatanggap tayo ng mensahe mula sa ilang mga tagapagtanggol niya na sinasabing bias daw ang ating exposition. Dahil dito ay minabuti po naming bigyan din ng panahon na maiere ang kanilang panik. Ito ang dahilan kung bakit na ipalabas namin ang mga statement ng ilang mga pastoral ni Kibuloy gaya ni na Arlene Rillon at Stephanie Ibarra dahil kahit papano gusto rin naman natin na marinig yung side nila at hindi tayo nagbigay ng anumang negatibong konklusyon sa kanilang mga pahayag manapa ay hinayaan natin ang mga manonood na magbigay ng kanilang opinion because again ito po ay personal na karanasan ng mga nagsasalita So wala tayong karapatang hatulan yung kanilang mga personal na saloobin. So sa pagkakataong ito mga kababayan ay pakinggan naman natin ang side ng ilang mga Ukrainians kung ano ang masasabi nila sa kanilang pamumuhay sa poder ni Kibuloy. Another female workers from Ukraine and myself were invited and uh, were given the privilege to stay in the central headquarters uh, and meet our beloved pastor in person and all the commodities of the kingdom were freely open for our use. Um, after some time, as they went home, multiple times they flew in and out of the Philippines and when they went home uh, to Ukraine, they left the ministry. So. We were really shocked hearing them saying those uh, blatant lies because first place, uh, they were given an opportunity to fly back home every once in a while. And beside that, after staying some time here, they even invited their families and relatives to visit them here, their parents and their younger siblings, and they encouraged them also to become workers like themselves. So, if they were uh, physically abused or raped as they claim, how would you ever do that? You would introduce the person who allegedly raped you to your parents. It doesn't even make any sense, you thinking that a person would do that. And secondly, they really don't look like they were physically abused or their rights were violated, they were not, not, that they were not happy here, because they looked like they were enjoying their life. And everything was open to them. It comes with a very heavy emotional trauma, which in their outward look, you would never say that. They don't look like somebody who has been abused and traumatized here. Pastor opened their heart and provided them with everything that they could ever ask for. So looking back, I don't really see any reason for them, you know, to, to say those things. And in fact, it doesn't even reconcile what they say and how they left. Another thing is, I cannot re really reconcile their statements because if ever you were raped, Why would it take you eight years of staying in the ministry before you would even start talking about it? If that allegedly happened back in 2013, why that only in 2018 they left the ministry? If that was the reason why they left the ministry, as they claim, and why would those allegations only come out in 2023? So you can't really reconcile that. If you were raped, you would not like to stay in the ministry a minute longer. Uh, some of those Ukrainians came after us, uh, some families and uh, some uh, uh, ladies, and they were really happy here. Why? Because they never complained. They never showed to us uh, their problem here and that uh, they were uh, abused of some uh, things or poor persons. They always, like, was... they. Always like happy and enjoy, exciting will be here. And uh, my wonder was uh, when the, those accusations go to pastor because um, if it uh, happening, if it was uh, happened many times, why they talk about this only now, not uh, for those years 
when they can freely go back to their parents, even their parents came here how many times, invite them here, and they saw everything here. Parents uh, talked to pastor, parents were um, invited by pastor also, pastor paid for everything. If pastor did this, how can he freely to invite parents? It's very dangerous if parents will know about this bad and terrible things, what they accuse now to pastor. That's why I don't believe any words of this. The uh, pastor is a really good person because I trust to her. If it's pastor, really bad man. Why you did not tell to me first? Because I have three kids. You, you is the one who testify that pastor is good things. You can trust your children to him because he is like father. Yes, you is the one. But after a few, few years, you change your testimony and already like uh, flow to pastor many dirty things. It's that's why uh, that time when we have to hear, be here. I really study who is pastor. I really know who is pastor. He's so close to pastor. Also, I cannot believe in this because if uh, we so close to pastor, my kids really too close to pastor. And many kids here in Central very close to pastor. And never ever one even kid talk about uh, this uh, abuse. Not only the physical things, but especially it's love because you cannot lie to the kids. If kids is failing, feeling something, but they will not, they will not go, they will not. But my kids, not only my, everybody, everybody who is living here, everybody who pastor, every kids who, like pastor taking care. When they meet him, they hug him, they very like, love him. That's why, if you, if you want really know who is pastor, you can ask kids and they will answer because kids really cannot lie they will really tell them that's why i'm like mother i know that it's true love it's not physical abuse it's not rape uh, even my uh, eldest daughter he's in pastoral ministry i'm a, I, i'm as mother if if i really see something bad if i see something not properly things about my kids. I'm not allowed them to stay there. I, I did not. I I get them and right away go back from from uh, go back to Ukraine or some another country because it's really not good to them to the kids. But for me, for my kids, it's best life because pastor for my kids is like father. He loves them. He give them everything what they need. And I am happy that she is there because I know it's best for her. It's, it's best for my son because he is the boy, is the one boy in my family. <laughs> my son always look at pastor and he is like example for him. And he always said, no, I will be a pastor. If it's bad, if it's bad person, who is the from kids who said, I will be like pastor? No, of course. Because mm, I, I, I really sure, I know, I saw, I see and continue to like dedicate my life, my, my life, my kids to the, this ministry, to pastor, to and testify all over the world that pastor is not like that. But the testimony about him, very bad things, that pastor is uh, rape kids or uh, like physical abuse or something else. No, it's not true. It's really, really big lie. I was once together with them and I'm a living witness of how pastor has changed and transformed their lives. And those allegations are nothing but a blatant lies. And uh, I would like also to take this opportunity to thank uh, pastor that amidst all of these accusations and allegations thrown against the, against him, he still continues to instill in us the value of loving our neighbor and even going to the extent of loving our enemies. Thank you so much, Pastor, for everything that you have done for us. I just want to say, Pastor, a very, very big thanks to you that I'm here with my kids. You always teach me only 
good only bad things that uh, that I can use it now for my life uh, to continue doing my ministry. And uh, I remember that day when I promised to you, Pastor, uh, be with you until the end. It's true. I will continue my message. I will continue my ministry no matter what. If it's good days or it's bad days, if it's um, big blessings, big, big trials, no matter what. Uh, I just I want to uh, tell to you that uh, my love big, big for you, Pastor. My life, it's in the hand of the Father through you, Pastor. So we love you, Pastor. We are waiting you here. We will continue do our ministry best what we can, Pastor Father. About uh, pastor's love, about pastor's kindness, mercy, goodness, and about his big heart, I can say only that it's really good man. He always and always try to do only best for us. If those people don't understand him, but um, pastor, every, every time he can help us to change our physical life to spiritual life, and understand first of all spiritual things and we want to say thank you very much for your patience for your kindness for your love and uh, for everything that you gave to us in every day of our lives because of you pastor we are here still here and we know that father almighty will guide us through you uh, everywhere uh, and we don't afraid anything, Pastor. We always will be with you and protect the truth. And uh, we never believe in these uh, false accusations, Pastor. Never ever. So sa atin pong narinig, muli ay hindi tayo magbibigay ng anumang paghusga sa kanilang mga personal na karanasan. Hindi natin sasabihin na sila'y mga bayaran o mga sinungaling. Pero nais naming iwan sa inyo ang ilang mga talata na mababasa sa aklat ng Biblia. Dito sa unang Korinto, Kapitulo 1, Talatang 19, ang sabi ng Panginoong Diyos, Sapagkat nasusulat, Iwawalat ko ang karunungan ng marunong, at isasawala ko ang kabaitan ng mababait. Ano ang ibig sabihin nito mga kapatid? Hindi batayan ang kabaitan para sabihin ang isang tao ay sa Diyos o hindi. Lalo na kapag mga mga ngaral. Ah, kapag mga ngaral ka katulad ni ni Apolo Kibuloy, e iba ang dapat na maging standard para ikaw ay masabing sa Diyos. Para sa isang mga ngaral, ang batayan ng pagiging sa Diyos ay hindi yung kanyang mga biyayang ibinibigay sa iilang mga tao. Ang standard ng tunay na mga ngaral ay yung kanyang mga aral na itinuturo sa lahat ng mga tao. Ang sabi ng Panginoong Hesus dito sa Juan 7.17 Kung ang sino man tao ay nag-iibig gumawa ng kanyang kalooban, ay makikilala niya ang turo kung ito'y sa Diyos o kung ako'y nagsasalita na mula sa aking sarili. Ang sabi naman ni Apostol Pablo sa Ikalawang Timoteo 2.15 Pagsikapan mong humarap na subok sa Diyos, manggagawang walang anumang ikahihiya na gumagamit na matuwid ng salita ng katotohanan. So maliwanag na ang batayan ng isang tunay na mga ngaral ay hindi yung kanyang mga tulong na ibinibigay, kundi yung mga aral na kanyang tinuturo, yung mga katotohanan na ipinapaalam sa mga tao. Ang sabi dyan, siya ay gumagamit na matuwid ng salita ng katotohanan. So, teaching the truth is the basis of a true preacher. Ang ating dalangin, sana ay huwag tumingin ang ating mga kababayan sa kabaitan o sa mga material na ibinibigay ng isang tao. Ang pagbibigay ng material na bagay ay hindi pala tandaan ng tunay na pag-ibig sa kapwa. Hindi porke mapagbigay ka sa harap ng kamera o sa harap ng mga tao e eh, sa Diyos ka na. Hindi doon nasusukat ang tunay na pag-ibig lalo na sa isang mga ngaral. Ang tunay na pag-ibig sa kapwa ay ang akayin sila sa katotohanan. Ang sabihin sa kanila ang katotohanan. Ang turuan sila na huwag maging mga mangmang sa salita ng Diyos. Ang sabi sa unang Korinto 13.3 at kung ipagkaloob ko ang lahat ng aking mga tinatangkilik 
upang ipakain sa mga dukha at kung ibigay ko ang aking katawan upang sunugin datapwat wala akong pag-ibig ay walang pakikinabangin sa akin so maliwanag na hindi nakikita ang pag-ibig sa pagbibigay lang ang sabi ni Apostol Pablo sa kanyang sulat sa mga taga-Efeso hindi na tayo matutulad sa mga batang nadadala ng bawat aral parang sasakyang dagat na sinisiklot-siklot ng mga alon at tinatangay ng hangin hindi na tayo malilinlang na mga taong ang hangad ay ibulid tayo sa kamalian manapa sa pamamagitan ng pagsasalita ng katotohanan sa diwa ng pag-ibig magiging ganap tayo kay Kristo na siyang ulo so iyon ang pag-ibig yung ipaalam mo sa mga tao kung ano ang totoo aanhin mo nga naman ang lahat ng pabor na ibibigay sa iyo kung sa likod naman nito'y ipinagkakait sa iyo ang tunay na pagkain ng iyong kaluluwa.